last week, we talked about how um, it was all about holding the vision of love and that commitment to ourselves. That, that truly showing up for ourselves, being committed to ourselves, being committed to loving ourselves and all of that. And when we do that, it serves our relationships. It like uh, assists us in merging and being with the person that we're in relationship with when we're in relationship with ourselves. Well, we have another brilliant minister who's also out there in the world in a big way. Her own TV show, you know, is actually going to be here in July for all you that want to know about that. Um, I've already got the inside scoop on that. And we have this great quote from uh, Iyanla Van Zant that sets us up for the entire time together today, okay? Iyanla tells us to stay in your car. Stay in your car, in your own lane, on your own road, in your world. She repeats, stay in your own lane. <laughs> Don't be minding other people's spiritual business. Stay in your car, in your lane, on your road, in your world. Yeah, but, you, you know, you really need to be doing it like no. this, really. I think I'm going to just reach over here, and I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to drive. I, I'm driving my car. I, I, I'm heading down the road in my own lane. We. Well, wait, I think you need to turn on your blinker. Will you turn on your blinker? You're not turning on your blinker. You, know, you really I'm, need to turn I, on I'm your blinker. I'm going straight right now. Somebody's going to hit you no, if you don't right turn now. on your blinker. Could you stay in your own lane? Stay in your own car. No, look, I'm going to just, let me just drive for you, okay? I'm, let me just drive for you. I'll show you how to, I'm, I'm going to, you're, you're going the wrong way. I'm going to drive for you. <laughs> I was driving my car, staying in my own lane. Does this sound at all familiar to you? <laughs> <laughs> really, have we ever done that? No, nah, right? So our job is to actually stay in our own car, in our own lane, on our own road, in our own world. And when we do that, we can actually merge. As Karen so beautifully talked about last week, one whole person plus one whole person actually e means a whole relationship. Um, hand and everything. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And um, so, I know I do have my hand. I, it's a good thing to have my hand. <laughs> I wasn't so, getting in your lane. So stay in your own lane and then merge. And to do that, we have um, some rules of the road. Rules of the road so that you can drive your own car and not be driving the car of the person you're in relationship with or reaching out the window and trying to drive their car for them um, or tell them what to do. So, so the first rule of the road, we're going to have some stop and some goes. All right, so the first rule of the road is a stop. We need to stop trying to make our partner change. We need to stop trying to make them like us. We need to stop trying to um, have them be who we think they should be, who we think they ought to be. So Karen and I, we do the introvert-extrovert dance, right? I'm an introvert, and she likes to talk a lot. Now, wait a second. <laughs> uh, we both like to talk a lot. That doesn't make an extrovert. So when I, when I am really needing some quiet time, right, and quiet time, sometimes the energy is big for me. Right? So what doesn't work is for me to say, Karen, could you just be smaller? Right? Could you, could you just, you know, really, it's way too happy. Could you just stop that? <laughs> I mean, it, and isn't that what we do? Or Karen can say to me, could you be a little more engaged? Could you be a little more lively? Why are you sitting there reading your book? Because I, I like reading my book. Do you see? If I need for her to be different than she is, or she needs for me to be different than I am, we are actually saying that who we are is not okay. And we all know how that feels, 
right? We grew up with that in our families, with our, in our parent, with our parents or our siblings. We've certainly experienced that in relationships. How who we are simply somehow isn't acceptable or, or needs to be different. Yeah, so we can, can um, go and start or continue to allow uh, them to be who they are and really see our partners for who they truly are, uh, to see the spiritual truth of them. Um, first, to call out their gifts and to use their gifts. I remember uh, not too long ago, Petra said to me, she said, Karen, you really have this gift of engaging with people. You need to engage with the people in our community more. She really saw the truth of who I am. I'm that engager. I am that energy, that happy, that enthusiasm and lifting people up. And she said, so be that more, be that more. And she was um, shouting out my gift. And in the process, she was lifting me up, like lifting me up. Um, in those moments mm -hmm. and say, which enabled me to lift other people up. So, mm -hmm. so um, you know, to, to bring out our gifts and when we tend to, at least I do sometimes, get nervous about a certain situation or circumstance, she reminds me of my gifts. You know, it was like uh, recently I was asked to do the opening invocation for the turkey trot. I mean, that's over 35,000 people in Dallas, and they asked me to do it. And I was like, uh, 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 uh. she's like, Karen, you're great with people. You'll project well, you know, bring that extrovert um, person out. So what did I do? I talked to everybody, met everybody along the way, walk into the, you know, all of that. And so that when I was uh, there to do that invocation, I was standing strong in the gifts mm -hmm. of what I brought to the moment. And, and actually what I said to Karen, I said, this is perfectly in your lane, <laughs> right? This is in your lane. My lane, I'd just as soon stay home and write a book, work on my daily words, right? I touch people in a different way. I, I communicate in a different way. I have, a, my gifts are different. And, not, and really being able to see that that was in her lane and then lifting her up and saying, no, that is, I, I've been in Dallas for a very long time. Nobody's ever asked me to do the turkey trot, <laughs> right? And think of that, think of that. Think of the place where one could go at that point if we're not seeing the spiritual truth about each other and we're not lifting each other up. We could be taking that as somehow it's diminishing us, diminishing me. But, but when I see that spiritual truth in my partner and I'm like, oh my God, this is so in your lane. Go, go, go do it. Go do it. Go, go be prosperous. Go be, go be you. I'm going to go over here and get this book. Okay, she's going to get the book. Yeah, I remember when I first got here and uh, Petra uh, was writing these daily words and I, I loved write, uh, reading the daily words. And I said, well, let me give, try my hand at that. She said, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I want, let's not just be Petra's daily word. You know, we're, we're, we're doing ministry. Let's meet. Do you know how long it took me to write one? <laughs> I'll see you in two weeks. And I went, this isn't my lane. Would you go back to writing the daily words? I don't want to do this. Yeah. And we didn't need for each other to be different. Do you see that? Right? And to really know that truth. So in our fabulous book, The Seven Secrets to Healthy, Happy Relationships, from Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Um, and um, Heather Ash Amara, you may begin to notice when your partner appears to be tilting off balance and reacting with words or actions that are not in alignment with who you know their best self, with who you know to be their best self. In these moments, rather than getting defensive or combative, awareness invites us to look deeper. Our desire is, in fact, to support our partner as much as possible. And this means looking at your partner's actions and behaviors with an understanding heart. Do you see, I could tell when Karen was getting nervous about the turkey trot. She was like, I don't know whether I can do it. I don't know if I should do it. I don't think I have the time. I got too much to do, right? And I know her tells for when she's getting nervous. 
And so I can either say, what? what what's the matter with you? Come on, you're, you're, you're supposed to be a minister. Go, go do it. Or I can say, no, really, this is in your lane. This is actually what you're called to do. Do you see the difference in those two things? To really be able to see the truth in someone else and lift them up. Now, this does not mean that there aren't times for communication when, when something isn't working, right? This doesn't mean we just lift each other up no matter what, or um, when we feel like somebody is really going to, you know, they're going off the cliff, or this is a big, terrible mistake they're making. We do actually get to give feedback to each other. And communication is a very important piece in relationships. And I'm going to be talking about communication next week. Um, on uh, sun in our Sunday talk next week to really bring that piece in. Um, so I want to set that aside as a caveat because sometimes we do sort of just love and accept in, in a somewhat codependent way or in a, in a way that doesn't allow us to tell our truth as well. So, so we're going to set aside for a moment those times when we really actually do need to say something um, and... Um, and understand that what we're talking about is really an energetic, an energetic seeing the truth, seeing the, the, the spiritual truth of that person, of our partner, um, and lifting them into their greatness. Yes. So another thing that we could, um, another rule of the road, we're going to invite you, if you're doing it, um, is to stop trying to be about their life. <laughs> Oh, hmm. I'm going to talk about somebody in my past. Um, I remember that, um, do you know that there's more than one way to load a dishwasher? <laughs> right? It sounds reasonable. Who, who knows that there's more than one way to load a dishwasher? Well... <laughs> oh, there it is, right there. So when you're being about someone else's life, then you come in and say, no, this is the way you load the dishwasher. There's only one way to load the dishwasher, and you need to load it this way. So, so, so I'm just going to tell them myself. <laughs> so, so, so we do a lot of eating here at night, so our dishwasher is filled with a lot of coffee cups, a lot of water cups, occasionally, you know, breakfast dishes and things like that. And so I don't put the, I don't put the bowls on the top of the dishwasher because we need that for all the cups over the course of a week, all the morning cups, all the, right, the, the, I put the, all them down, down below. Where do you think Karen puts them? <laughs> up above. <laughs> she puts them up above because... Clearly, that is how she understands they should be, which if we were eating dinner at night and had dinner plates, you would need that space, right? So, so I have, in the past, I admit, I have been one of those people who would... I, I wasn't talking about us I know, I know, I know. That's why I'm outing myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been in the past one of those people who would have said, okay, really, Really? You're going to keep putting them up there? Because we don't have enough room for our coffee cups. Can't you just put them down below so we have room for our coffee cups? I mean, that makes sense, right? Because that is the right way to do it, given our circumstance. I'm proud to say that I've never said that. <laughs> I'd... Oh, maybe never? once. <laughs> oh, she was great until she said never. <laughs> Okay, almost never. <laughs> I was going to like celebrate. You know, you don't do that anymore. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> right? Because it doesn't serve, does it? So either we, either we leave the bowls at the top, or if I need the room for the coffee cups, I simply move them down. Which is really great that she grew out of that. Because <laughs> when I was growing up, I had someone in my life that, I, you know, one of my chores was to do the dishes, right? You do the dishes after dinner. And it was just like clockwork. I would do the dishes. I felt so proud. And I couldn't fit one dish in it. And this person would come and take them all out of the dishwasher, rearrange to get that last dish in there. So I'm glad you've stayed in, out of my lane as it comes to dishes. I'm very grateful. 
do you, right? And it's, a, and it's a silly example, but aren't those the very things that start to become the annoyance and the gritch and the, the, the need to tell someone else what to do or how to do it. Yeah, and to, um, another one to stop doing is to telling them um, uh, what to do and what they need to change. You know, So let's say your partner, you know, you live day in and day out with him or her, they don't like their job. They just don't like their job. They're not inspired by their job or whatever. And at some point you just say, will you just change your job? Tell them what to do. No, don't do that. Or you should change your job. Oh, the shoulds. Yeah, right? You want to know if you're telling your partner what to do, just listen to the shoulds. Well, you should do this. Well, you should do that. Or listen to the implied should. Because, of course, we're all spiritually aware and we know better, but we can sure slip it in there, can't we? Even though we don't actually say that word, but it is actually what we mean. Mm -hmm. So are you going to talk about this? I thought this was a really good example. Okay, she wants me to talk about the yeah, furniture. Yeah, I thought that was a really Telling good example. Telling them what to do. You know, Tell them how do to things. do it. We, yeah, how to do things. We all do things differently. And again, in my past truthfully in my past. So stay out of the lane. You don't have to come in. And um, um, that I know in the past when I would do a, a, a fun project, you know, like Ikea furniture or whatever, you got to build it, right, before you can use it. And I'm the type of person that no matter how complex it might look, I sort of just start at, you know, step one and start going. Um, I was with someone that really felt the way to do it was you got to read the whole instruction manual first. Get it all out of the way, know where you're going, how you're ending up, every piece you need, get all the tools out, do this, do that. And I'm like, can I just start with step one? So right. stay out of the lane. And Don't in both cases... Tell people how to do it. Right. In both cases, the furniture would get built, right? Karen would build her furniture just exactly the way along, you know, along the road. And, and what we think is, of course, that our way is more efficient or more effective better. But in better in some way. And if they could just get a clue, right, then we're actually, so, it, so, it, so then the, my favorite thing is that we, that we, um, we drop it in under the, under the heading, well, I'm just trying to help. Yeah, that's, that's a, a very common heading. Right. I'm, I'm just, just trying to help. But I'm just help. trying to help. Right. When actually what, uh, what I've done is I've actually, I've actually gotten into somebody else's lane because they're not doing it. They're not driving down the road the way that I would drive down the road. Now, maybe I drive at 90 and she drives at 50. Or maybe it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're both going to get there. We're both going to get there. And I tend to be the one, I'm like the one who's like, wow, look at the clouds. Wow, they're so pretty. Oh, my God. You know, and so I'm like wandering around. But I am actually going to get there, too. Do you see? And it's all of those little ways in which we, um, we yeah, we really impact our relationships negatively. So if we're going to stop doing that, then we want to think about what we are going to do. So how do we actually want to be with each other? What's the go? What's the green light? Well, the green light is to actually hold their good for them. They are actually going to do whatever it is. They will get there. They will, you know, they will dry, um, come to their destination. There, there is the way in which someone else has, especially when it comes out of who they are, right? We talked about really celebrating who they are. When it comes out of that, then we can really let them do it in the way that, yeah, feels good, makes, makes sense to them. And when we hold their good for them, then we can really cheerlead. So if we take Karen's furniture example, right, we can really cheerlead. Great, I'm so excited. I know you're going to put that together, and it's going to be amazing when we put it up and we get to use it. Do you see how different that is? And whether that's a simple little example like furniture, whether it's something really powerful, like I'm going to you know, go do the prayer at the turkey trot, or whether it's anything, big or small, to really cheerlead. Um, even if we have a different opinion. You know, it's one of the most extraordinary things I discovered years ago is that my opinion, my opinion did not always matter. Really. 
It was not always required. And it was okay to really begin to learn to say, no, really, I don't have... First, I had to say, my first was, I don't have to have an opinion about that. That was, that was really for me. Like, really, you do not have to have an opinion about how this furniture is being built. You do not have to have an opinion about it. So I don't have to have an opinion about it. And then that eventually shifted into, no, really, I don't have an opinion about that. I don't have an opinion. It, it really is however you see it to be done. And to allow that to be so. The other side of that coin of not giving advice, like not in limb, I'm just going to try to help, is that we actually then respond when somebody asks for ad advice, right? And so in, when there's space and somebody's not always telling us what to do and we're each in our own lane and we're driving in our own car, then it's much easier to say, wow, I really need help. I can't figure out where I am on the map. Can you come show me? Right? And to actually ask for that advice. And uh, truthfully, I have been in a relationship in the past where it, somebody really wanted to give me advice except for when I needed it. Like, what is that? No, really, now I am, in fact, asking for your help or advice. This is actually when I need or want it. And so that is when we actually want to show up for our partner. And when they ask for it, and of course our job is to ask clearly, no, really, I am in fact asking for your thoughts and opinions about this, because it's important to me. Um, and finally, we really practice, and Karen has really taught me this. Um, I remember when she started to saying to me, no, really, you can assume that what I'm saying to you, my intention is to support you. You can assume that. Do you see? Because I have ears that hear criticism. That's what I was raised with. I have ears that hear it's never good enough. You didn't do it right. Those are, those, that's my listening. And so if there's the slightest thing off with how Karen will say it or the words or whatever it is, my hearing goes to I'm being criticized and being told that I'm not doing it right. And over and over and over and over again, Karen has had to remind me, no, really, you can assume that I'm supporting you. And when I put those ears on, oh my God, what she says to me is, comes out completely different in my hearing. Do you see what I'm saying? Right? And so we then, if, if, if my partner is going to assume that I'm always speaking in support, then that's my job, is to speak in support. Right? That has to do with tone of voice and how we're responding and all of those kinds of things. Now again, I want to set the caveat aside. This does not mean that there aren't times when we really do have to communicate something. No, really, the way that you said that really hurt my feelings. Or, wow, I really heard that as whatever. Right? And we're going to talk about that next week because communication is a key element to our um, relationships, to our healthy relationships. But the more that I can know that that's what I'm doing, the more she can assume that I am speaking in support. Because I know who she is, and because I know the kinds of ways in which she engages in the world, right? So I'm cheerleading that, I'm providing support when she asks for it, and I'm on her side. Yeah, I'm on your side too. Will you bend that away from your mouth? What am I doing? Because just bend it away a okay. little bit. So okay, that, there, we, there go. we go. Is that better? Yes. Yay. So when we stay in our, see, I'll let her do that. When we stay in our own lane, this actually makes merging possible. We get to begin to merge. We're in our own lanes, and now we get to merge. And the, uh, when we merge, we, uh, it's the result of um, being committed to our own personal growth. So... I am committed to my own personal growth, my own spiritual growth, the expansion of myself in my own life, and 
Petra is committed to her personal growth, her spiritual growth, and the expansion of her own life. In fact, we just each separately went through massive personal spiritual growth at the same time in different places. And we supported one another in that so that we could come back and merge and go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I let go of some, some weight and heavy baggage. Mm -hmm. And so we're each committed to our own personal growth. And when we do that, then we are a stronger committed couple, right? And merging is even more fun and it's more available. So we want to uh, do that. The um, other thing is that we see the truth of one another at all times. We see the spiritual truth. At all times? Well, as best that's we like can. Never. <laughs> Always, never, right. all. Should. Okay. Right. All that Most of the time, right. and we come from a place of seeing the spiritual truth of one another. Um, example. Think of an example where we've done that recently for one another. Well, uh, um, we are planning a vacation, right? We're planning a vacation this summer in August. Um, we ha have the opportunity to go to Colorado for three weeks. And one of the things that Karen knows about me is that I fill my cup um, by being alone. And so... The very first thing that Karen said to me when we started planning this vacation was, why don't you go for the first week by yourself? I've never had anybody say that to me. I've always felt selfish or like I wasn't giving into the relationship or something was wrong with me that I needed so much alone time. And let me tell you, I had partners who were quite willing to tell me how not okay that was for me to need that much alone time. And she just, she just gifted it to me. And it was like, oh, I, I, I can do that? You're okay with that? Well, yeah, I know how much that means to you. And I'll join you um, the following week. Oh, my God. Do, do you see? Right? What an extraordinary gift of being committed to my growth, to her own growth. That's, you know, she likes to be around people. She likes, me to, she likes to have me around. That's a huge thing. And it's also seeing the truth about me and what, what I need and what fills my cup up. Yeah, what, what really feels, uh, fills, fills, <laughs> that's a Southern thing, that's a word of practice, fills her cup up. Um, and to know the spiritual truth, just like I am never outside, I'm never separate from life itself, from God, from spirit, I know the spiritual truth that we can't be separate. So right. we can stay in our own lanes and merge right. and create that space, create a space for joy. Yeah. Well, and merging gets shut down, right? Do you see that gets that, that space for joy gets shut down when we do the things that we talked about stopping, right? Telling each other what to do, um, how to do it, and really you know, needing for the other person to be different than they are. These are the things that shut that ability um, to really be in a whole healthy relationship, really shut that down. But when we are whole people coming to a whole relationship with, you know, with all of its challenges and all of its growth opportunities, it really does, in fact, create the space for joy. You know, and isn't that what we want in our relationships? We get into a relationship because we are seeking to experience and express that joy. So I want to read this, um, uh, this piece uh, again from our book of the month. Joy contains multitudes, curiosity, connection, surprise, ease, pride, bliss, humor, and hope. It manifests in us when we are open-hearted, present, and fully engaged. Joy is placed after healing because if we refuse to allow ourselves to look at, feel, and heal from our emotional pain, we cannot fully release into joy. Though it might seem counterintuitive, joy thrives in the full experience of life. We can't shut down or hide our pain without also shutting down joy. Practically speaking, 
There are three concrete ways to cultivate joy in your relationship. Creativity, curiosity and play, and sexual pleasure. And do you see that those spaces are only available to us when we are open-hearted enough to allow the other person to be who they are, show up the way that they show up, and we are truly um, enamored and excited by that rather than these things that we've talked about needing to stop. So we're to um, hold this vision of love and one of the rules of the road is to hold the destination. Destination for our own lives in our own lane and to stay out of the other person's lane and to let them and to see when they want support, they're looking for support, and we lift them up, and we're still in our lane, and when they want help, we come over and assist. But we also, as a, as a couple, hold mm -hmm. the vision of the destination of where we want to go. And I love that um, Dennis Merritt Jones says this about this from a spiritual perspective. He says, from a spiritual perspective, we have come here to have relationships. Relationships are the vessels in which we travel toward a common destination, which is a greater realization of unconditional love. And so as we um, hold ourselves and are fully committed to loving ourselves, or we're fully committed to knowing the best and hold the spiritual truth and the highest for the person that we're with, and we have a common shared destination in which we want to be to, then this thing called unconditional love, love without conditions. Well, I'll love you if. Or I'll love you when. Mm -hmm. Doesn't occur. Mm -hmm. And so we invite you all on this road, this beautiful journey together, and that we have the destination of true, committed, loving partnerships so that we have joy and joy abounds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you want to go a little deeper, please join us for the workshop this afternoon. Karen and I are doing a workshop. We're going to share a few things that we've, we've done in the last year or so that's, that have, that's really allowed us to do some of this work um, together, and we want to share it with you. So join us after the lunch um, for the workshop. So let us take a moment to anchor all of this in. I invite you to go within with me. So we go into that place where we remember that there is only love. One infinite love, one wellspring of love. And it is the impulse of life. <laughs> and that love is pouring itself in through and as each one of us. It's pouring itself into all people everywhere, into all creation. For love is forever giving of itself. And it gives itself as you and I, through us, into the world. And so this morning I affirm and declare for each one of us that we are open to that presence of love. That that very truth lifts us and guides us into greater awareness into a fuller presence of that love and that that love pours out into our relationships. I affirm that we release any negative patterns from the past. We let go of any old ideas or habitual ways of being for they have no place in this love and there's nothing holding them in place. Nothing holding them so we brush them away like we brush away a cobweb. That we may reveal the love that is here. That we discover it within our own hearts and that we share it in our own lives. We are lifted by this love, guided by this love, supported by this love every moment. And as we do so, love abounds. So knowing that this is the truth for each and every one of us right here, right now, I accept it as so. I accept the truth. 
And as I let it be, we say together, and so it is.